The wonderful Hobby Life For You exhibition or One Fest is organized by Good Smile Company and Max Factory. It is held in Akihabara in Tokyo and the current exhibition is One Hobby 34 which started on the 2nd of October which was pretty much last week on Saturday. It will end tomorrow on the 10th. The last One Hobby which was One Hobby 33 was held sometime back in June. Pretty much this exhibition is where all the figure companies sh would showcase their new figures and this is pretty much where figure collectors tend to aggregate to, to check out what's coming up and to see how much their wallet will be deprived of any moolah when the time comes for pre-ordering. For the non-Japanese collector, accessing the One Hobby exhibition is by the online gallery. According to the website, due to COVID, the exhibition will only be opened up to the public in a limited capacity. So I guess a lot of Japanese fans will be checking this out online as well. The website does list out the other participating companies. And in the list, uh, you could see companies like Fat Company, Freeing, Kadokawa, Karani, and a whole host of other makers as well. I tend to buy figures from anime or manga that I like and from this gallery that we could see here on the website we've got a whole range of figures running from scales down to nandroids and figmas. As you can see from the thumbnails in the gallery some of the prototypes are not painted. Usually these prototypes will be featured again in the upcoming exhibition where you could get an update on what the figure will look like. Nevertheless, let's start with um, the ones that piqued my interest. Uh, first off are two figures from the Yuru Camp franchise. They are not skills, but pop-up parade figures. They are of Shima Rin and her best mate Kagamihara Nadeshiko. For Shima Rin, the figure is a painted prototype and as expected for a pop-up parade is a very basic pose of her just standing with a massive scarf around her neck holding a book. Interestingly, however, Nadeshiko has a dynamic appearance. Here you could see that she's uh, in a running pose, um, like as if she was rushing for school. Again, with a big ass scarf around her neck, <laughs> the big smile and cute large eyes are typically Nadeshiko. I think they've got the sculpt down pat on this one. The surprise for me is that, um, as I've said before, good smile figures tend to be a bit boring with regards to how they are posed. But I have seen recently of more interesting poses in figures from this range. And I think um, this is something that I'll definitely pre-order when the time comes. A pop-up print figure usually retails at about 3,900 yen. If you were to buy it from Ami Ami, you tend to get a discount and it'll turn out to be 3,300 yen. Um, okay, the next figure that caught my eye is also another pop-up parade, but it's from another franchise, which I've recently just got into, um, Boku no Hero Academia, and it's that of Shigaraki Tomura. Shigaraki's figure does not have a an utterly dynamic pose, but he does look angry in this one. The scalp of the hand gripping his face and the upper limbs are pretty much intriguing to me. So I'm looking forward to see what he looks like painted, which should be in the next uh, One Hobby exhibition. And again, for 3,300 yen, this looks quite good. On the topic of Boku no Hero Academia, there are three sets of figures uh, in the gallery from a maker called Asfire. I've not heard of them before. And they are figures of Deku and Bakugo. I'm describing the first two figures first. Deko is in here with a leaping pose with crackling green flashes around his hands. There appears to be an elaborate looking base which looks to be part of a collapsed building as you can see some vents um, at the bottom there. While Bakugo is in here with a somewhat maniacal looking face um, laughing and uh, incipient explosions on both his hands as expected from his quirk. The third are actually a set of two figures, reminiscent of what you'd expect in a resin type figure, is that of Deku versus Stain. I think this is possibly a 
a recreation of a classic illustration in volume 7 of the manga which coincidentally I read this morning. Um, as you can see, this is a pretty impressive looking set. If these figures are one eight scale each, looking at the size of the base, this appears to be pretty massive. Next is going for a less action-y kind of figure, back to <coughs> waifus, um, is a figure from Konosuba. So this is the pop-up parade aqua swimsuit version. It's unpainted, but um, I could imagine that they'll probably make a swimsuit blue in color. Also, at the moment, we do have a Megumin pop-up parade swimsuit version that is currently available for pre-order, and she's due out for December 21, and I presume this should be forming a set. And I could anticipate Darkness will be joining the fray too. Um, we do not have any news whether or not there will be a Darkness swimsuit version but pretty much at the rate of how things go, she might be in the pipeline soon. It will be interesting to see if they, sh they could include uh, the other Konosuba girls like perhaps Viz or um, Yun Yun. On the topic of uh, beachwear figures, next we have a quarter scale Kasumi Gaoka Utaha animation version from the Saikano anime manga now this one is by good smile company um, not all quarter skills are made by freeing this prototype again is unpainted it's of uh, Utaha and reclining in a somewhat alluring pose this is likely to be matched with Kato Megumi again made by good smile company Kato Megumi's beachwear figure will be released sometime in August of next year, available for 19,000 yen. So presumably uh, Utaha here will be at the same price. I'm not likely to be buying this girl's um, first. I don't have much more space. And besides, I think I've got quite a few of the Saikano girls in my collection. <laughs> On the topic of more waifus, we have Mizuhara Chizuru from Rent a Girlfriend. Um, this one's only an announcement from a Good Smile Company and we only have an illustration of it. Presumably that'll be how the scale would look like. It's a 1 7 scale of Chizuru in pretty much um, enjoying an ice lolly, having a summer look to her. There have been quite a few Chizuru figures recently. Again, I'm not too sure whether I'll be getting this one. Because currently en route on a plane somewhere is uh, my uh, China version Chizuru figure which I've pre-ordered a million years ago. I'm sure she'll be featured in the next One Hobby 35 exhibition so that we'll have an idea what the prototype will look like. Now from the gallery, OneFest have featured Hakure Reimu and Kirisami Marisa uh, from the video game Toho project. I'm I'm not familiar with this game at all, but what I'm trying to point out here is that this is part of a series called the Hello Good Smile figures. They do look like some form of deconstructed Nendoroid. It looks like a, a downscale, very pixelated looking figures, if you know what I mean. I'm not too sure as of the size. I think if I've read it correctly, they should stand at about 100 millimeters in height. They're quite cheap as well. They should be about 1,500 yen each. Now, the reason I mentioned the Hello Good Smile range here. Three figures from the Kill la Kill franchise have popped up on Ami Ami for pre-order. Um, the figures are, are those of Ryuko, Satsuki and Mako. I've never given these figures a second look before, but for some reason, after looking at the three Kill la Kill uh, waifus, I kind of like go, hmm, 1,500 yen is probably not too bad to, you know, splash out on three figures. So yeah. I might just pre-order those three killer kill figures and we'll see what they look like uh, in real life. Um, they're supposed to be posable, but from the photographs, I think the only possibility that you get is some tilting of the head or possibly the head turning to the left or right. So those were the figures that are pretty much from anime or manga that I like. There are also a few other figures which I felt probably worth noting due to how well made they are. One particular figure I uh, notice is that of Ogiwara Sayu from the Hinge wa Soru Soshite Joshi Kosei o Hiro um, anime slash manga. They've not exactly told us what size she is. 
And when you look purely at the figure itself, uh, her squatting pose seen here is actually taken from the cover of the Higehiro light novel. This particular figure, in my opinion, looks better than what's currently available for pre-order, which is by Union Creative. And I quite like how she's posed here. You could see her right hand touching strength of her unkempt hair, because in the story, she's supposed to be a runaway schoolgirl. Onwards to this one, a black rock shooter. A 1-7 scale from Good Smile Company. Black Rock Shooter is seen here in a very dynamic pose, great looking base. Again, the whole setup here appears to be somewhat massive. It might well be enough to fit on a detolf shelf, but if not, then she'll need to be on a table or a top of a bookcase. At the moment, I do have her pop-up parade pre-ordered. Um, since I'm not too invested in the anime, but since I like the design, I thought, why not? And interestingly, this cheaper figure is a is based on the sculpt of the price here, uh, one eight scale by Good Smile Company. Now, despite the One Hobby Thirty Four website indicating companies other than Good Smile Company participating, the online gallery didn't seem to include figures from these other companies. Well, thanks to the website ruruberries.com, uh, links to this site in the description below, we do get to see these other figures. Um, as I was particularly interested in following two figure prototypes from the previous One Hobby Thirty Three. And these are the uh, quarter scale freeing B style bunny figures of Mizuhara Chizuru and Sakura Sawasumi, both from Rent a Girlfriend. Now, at that time, the prototypes were unpainted. Even then, we could see what the pose was like, and I noticed that they departed from the usual appearance of a typical B style freeing uh, bunny girl that both girls would sport stockings and garter belts. I'm not wanting to make a judgement on that decision, I have to say I'm not really too keen on them now. First, I think um, Chizuru's face doesn't look right in my opinion. I actually have a cheaper Bandai Spirits prize figure of her which look more like her in the anime slash manga. The only redeeming bit about these two figures is actually Sumi. Her pose is actually quite cute. She looks quite bashful, um, which is pretty much what she is in the manga and anime, if you've seen her before. I'm not going to criticize the choice of colors. They are fine as far as I'm concerned. I'm not well versed in women's fashion, but those heels just doesn't do it for me. They, I don't know. They, they have a 70s disco vibe to me and it just doesn't look, I don't know, it just doesn't look right. I think the stocking got belt combo in this instance is not working um, as it doesn't look as classy as the typical freeing B star figure. Um, now, but if they were under the binding label, however, you know. <coughs> so where, where were we? Um, it appears that there are a few more figures on the Twitter page of ruruberries.com at the time that I was editing this video. The figures are those of skills from a variety of different manufacturers, but two skills caught my eye, uh, which are those of Toga Himiko and Uraraka Ochako from Boku no Hero Academia. These are 1-7 scale figures by a company called Spiritale, um, which I've never heard of before. Himiko is seen set on a bunch of soft toys that unfortunately seem to have stab wounds on some of them, while Ochako is seen floating with her legs up in the air, surrounded by floating objects. In her left hand is her helmet, and um, she seems to have a very happy looking face, uh, perhaps enjoying herself floating in the air due to her quirk. Both prototypes are unpainted, um, so I'm quite looking forward to see what the Toga Himiko scale would look like. Um, somewhat reminiscent of this Monogatari scale of Yotsugi Ononoki, and it'll be quite interesting to see what they'll look like in the upcoming One Fest 35. I think I've gone on for a bit now, but um, I have to say I, I could only gloss over a few of the figures that are interesting to me. And as you can see from the online gallery, there are loads more to look at. I would recommend you checking out 
again, uh, Ruru Berries' um, excellent website or Twitter page to see uh, all these other figures. So that's pretty much what I think of the figures from One Hobby 34. I believe that I'll only get a handful of the figures that I've described earlier. And since most of them will be in the pop-up parade um, range, um, I don't expect to be out of pocket really um, in the next coming months. So I hope you like this little review and um, hope to see you soon.